Welcome back to Cine Nerds, everybody. If you saw our last episode and you're still here, we want to say thank you, because that movie was trash. <laughs> thank JP for that. Um, I don't know if he did that on purpose or set up. Don't really care either way. It was shit. So, uh, I'm James. I'm JP. I'm Ryan, and welcome to another installment of Cine Nerds. JP didn't pick this movie this time, so we're all safe. Uh-huh. Ryan, what'd you pick this week? I picked... Michael Douglas's movie Falling Down um, primarily because um, men of our age uh, as we've gotten older like I saw this when I was younger and it was just kind of a cool movie when I was younger now it's like a personal relatable. it's relatable <laughs> it's personal it's it's got every element it's basically Michael Douglas um, everything that he views wrong with the world and him being able to act out on it uh, now, I might not agree with things he sees as wrong with the world, but I definitely um, appreciated his ability to act on them and and, and, and move forward and, and just try and feel like a weight's been lifted off his shoulders. Uh, it didn't really go that way, but we'll explore that. Have you had you? Bleh, I can't even talk today. It's <laughs> because you had to watch that shitty movie last week. And you're still trying to get it out of your system. Oh, don't get me laughing again. <laughs> so, had you ever seen this film? No. Oh, it's the first time watched for yeah. you. So, okay. what was your initial thoughts? In the beginning, I was like, all right, come on, let's get going. And then once it got going, I was like, okay. Like, I I'm, didn't, I did not disagree with his views on things. I can say that on, on pretty much everything. But like you, like you, like you said, like. He acted. You can't. You can't react the way he reacted. Even back in '93 when this movie came out, mm-hmm. you still can't react that way. Just like you can't react that way now. But I agree with him. You know, like it. I. How many times have we been to McDonald's and it's ten thirty three and like you're like, oh. I mean, you can at least ask, hey, do you still have any laying around? Can you make it? And half the time they're gonna go, yeah, we got you. Uh, but I'm like, gonna throw back to a previous uh, episode of Cine Nerds. Um What was the name of the restaurant? That he went to when he did that. Oh God! What was whammy? It? Yeah, whammy. <laughs> yeah. Whammy burgers, whammy Sorry. shakes, whammy fries. Like, is it? But the thing is, like, the chicken of the cave. I don't know what just happened. Was that the one of the items? Yeah. Okay. In the uh, uh, in that. the extended cut, it was he was I, eating the chicken. He was like, he said, you know, it was bat, and he's like, it's chicken of the cave and Anchorman too. Oh, I. I thought we were talking about falling down. So well, we're talking about whammy so. and yeah, okay, fair. Yeah, yeah. Chicken of the ketchup. Cave. Now no, I got ketchup. it. Okay. Jesus Christ! Yeah, that was a deep dive. <laughs> there we go. Derail already. Um, the Nazi gun guy. That was. I mean, that was how those guys acted back then. They still kind of do now, but that's how, kind of how those guys. I, I knew a couple guys. Like I met guys who acted like that guy. So. I'll let you finish. No, no, no. Take, but so. like as a whole, I mean, in all reality, the guy just wanted to go see his kid. But the wife also knew he wasn't normal. And it's better to keep him away. And the, the best part to me was the end. Why? Uh, do, do we want to talk about that already? No, no. Yeah, but, exactly. That's why. Okay. I'll explain why when we get there. <laughs> okay. the, that one part at the end made me go, ha, that was awesome. But as a whole, I mean, I thought the movie was great. And it really does show that uh, um, even in 93 that the, the mental faculties of somebody who's under a lot of stress, trying to navigate through life, so and just being done with everything. So that era was when the phrase got coined, going postal, if you remember. And I felt like this was a good breakdown and representation of that because he had been laid off a month before, mm-hmm. uh, before this downward spiral. He had been lying to his mom, who he had to move back home to live with, uh, saying that he was going to his work. He worked for the Defense Department. Um, he's stuck in L.A. traffic. He can't. He's not going anywhere. He just leaves his car. And the movie starts, and it's basically his whole path to get to his daughter and mm-hmm. his ex-wife. Um, and the little encounters along the way... Uh, lead up to a very interesting adventure and there's a detective who's on the last day of his retire or before retirement it's his last day on the job uh and he's getting tired of being told he's worthless essentially and he just 
goes down this path. He starts seeing a formula, or a, basically starts seeing a, a connection to different crimes that are happening through the city, and pieces it back to Michael Douglas's character. Uh, what's his name in it? William? Is it right? I think he's William. It's uh, or Bill. William or Bill. Almost positive. But anyways, um, as it unfolds, though, you start seeing this whole thing happen. And you mentioned the Nazi uh, scene in the store. Mm -hmm. Um, And and I'll I'll get to more on that later, but um, I was just kind of giving a little synopsis of it. Initial take, first time I saw it when I was younger, like I said, did not appreciate this at all. But, um, you know, when you're growing up and you have a filter, uh, there are things that you think about in your head, things that you would never act on, never do they're still there because it's human uh but this guy he acts on them and so for me now that i'm older and i've become as we discussed in previous episodes not the get off my lawn guy but stop speeding down my street guy (laughs) um he embodies that and takes it a million steps further just because it is imperative that he gets to his daughter on his daughter's birthday to give her a gift so but he didn't even have the gift yet he had, yeah, he did, and that the the, um, 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 the, the Nazi, Nazi guy smashed it, smashed it. But he bought it on the way. He didn't even have it ready to go. He, I think honestly, I like the, the way I took it because today, like I watched it this morning. Like I literally woke up and said, "Okay, I'm gonna watch." I started it last night, and then I was like, "I'm gonna fall asleep. I'll, I'll finish it in the morning." I took it as he snapped in the traffic and was like, "I'm going home. I, I'm tired of being at this. Sh- I don't even have my job. I don't want to go back to my parents. I'm going home." And then he, and it's his daughter's birthday. He's like, I better. And so the gift was almost like, a, this is my way in the door to go home. That's the way I took it. Because he didn't have a gift when he first started going. He 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 had a briefcase that had a sandwich, a banana, and an apple or whatever in it, and that was it. He didn't have a gift in there because initially, when the gang members wanted the. When, he, when that happened, I think I think there's I think there's a, a two part to that though. I do think that you're, I think you're right. He didn't have the gift initially, and I do, but I do think he was well aware it was his daughter's birthday. But he probably thought initially he, he couldn't knew he, see yeah, her he knew he wasn't because the restraining to order. So the, the ex-wife had a restraining order you on him. Still send a and, gift. Well, I I'm I'm wondering if he was like, fuck this, I don't care about the restraining order, and that's where that's yeah. spun. So he still had yeah. the intention to go there, but now he's snapped. And the traffic moments pivotal to the whole movie uh, oh, yeah, I, I think that's what made him just go fuck this so my initial thoughts um i watched this movie when i was really young when it first came out um i i love this movie even back then i've watched it a few times over the years and i've enjoyed it every time i've watched it and every time i've watched it kind of a different time period in my life so i've had i think i've looked at it differently every every time i've watched it so when i watched it the this past week um i kind of i kind of had a different takeaway this time you know i i had the initial thoughts of when i was young it was like man what the fuck is wrong with this guy you know why Mm -hmm. is he like this then as I've gotten older, I was like, eh, I kind of, I kind of get it, you know. And now watching it, to you know, today, you know, or this past week, um, I still love the film, but I'm looking at it from a mental health point of view. I'm also looking at it from a parent that has been not allowed you know for you know for no reasons at all not be allowed to see your kid now i get that this guy is crazy and he probably doesn't need to be around his kid i also know the side and understand the side as a father of going to go get your kid and then told you can't get your kid and the emotional stress that that puts on that can put on you i like this version of you I just want to say that. Because, no, no, no. Just hear me out. So you guys gave me grief, I think, in the first few episodes. You're like, wow, you have, a, you have like an emotional connection to everything when you review it. And that's deep. Yeah. So I, I can I can get the aspect of – and, it, you know, and it, it doesn't really say other than maybe he was abusive. And I get that's not a good thing. You shouldn't – you know, and I'm not, I'm not condoning that in any shape or form. But it doesn't go into a lot of details of – 
what all actually happened. Right. So, I, so with fresh eyes this past week, I, I kind of went through the motions of, you know, if he's really just loves his daughter, he wants to see his daughter, he's not allowed to see his daughter, I understand that emotional turmoil that can make somebody snap to the point that this guy goes. And so I actually really felt bad for uh, Michael Douglas's character this time around. I really felt bad. I kind of felt his pain because I've been there. Um, I had custody of my son for a handful of years. He's over 18 now but uh, and in college. But his middle school and high school years, I had custody of him. But there was a time for a year or so there that he lived with his mother. And she made things very difficult for him and I to, to see each other. Um, so I, with that being said, I understand the turmoil, the, the, the stress, the, the mental stress, the, everything that goes with that. So when I, when I watch this movie with those eyes, now it's like, I really understand why this guy snapped, but and at this point, this watching, though, I'd actually, looking at it from that perspective, I don't agree with him this time. This time, I watched it, and I'm like, I don't agree with him, but I understand why he snapped. So, I'll give a, I'll give a different take on that, a hot take. <clears throat> I saw the other side of the coin. Typically, it's... Um, in domestic abuse scenarios, it's the uh, male hurting the female. Uh, when I was younger, my stepmother, um, my, my my father drinks quite a bit, but he's uh, he's never a violent person. He's very mm-hmm. uh, calm, keeps to himself. He, he's what it is. My stepmother would use this opportunity to get him riled up intentionally. She, I watched her slap him in the face over and over. And, and the third smack, because he was just sitting there taking it, her nail hit the corner of his eye. And all he did was put his hand up to stop her from hitting him and grabbed her wrist. And once he did that, she then called the police saying that he was doing it, he was hurting her, he was doing this. Now, in the police instance, in the police scene, uh, when she's explaining to the officer the abuse scenario, she claimed there was abuse. And then in the same instance, he goes, well, what kind? You want to know more? He's trying to go deeper, which police wouldn't do that nowadays. But... She couldn't give an instance, and she said there wasn't any. He didn't hit me. It was more I felt like he was going to be there. And so there's those weird little blurred lines where I almost wondered if she was poking, because you don't get the clarity of it, right? Yeah, and and that was my issue, was you don't get that clarity. Yeah, and so, like, but to me, like, (laughs) she could have... She could have driven him to that breaking point yeah. by saying something he wasn't, and then him becoming the monster. And that's that's what I felt this time was I felt like it was, it was, and and I'm please don't misconstrue what I'm saying because abuse is not okay. And if you're no. in that situation, you need to get what out. Do you call last and episode, you, and you need to, <laughs> that's different. <laughs> <laughs> but you need to get away from the situation and a kid a a child should not be in that situation (laughs) no however however or put a grown adult in a situation like last episode the the takeaway i got this time with the lack of clarity on her behalf to the police she she said well he never physically did anything he never did i just you know and she was never clear so at this point and that was my perspective was i feel like Maybe he was actually the one that was mentally abused to the point that he snapped. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was kind of my takeaway this time. And I've, I've seen this movie, at, like I said, at different points in my life. And I've seen it from a different perspective in different points in my life. And yeah, We can admit, though, he had an anger issue. He had an anger. No, yeah, the dude was crazy. But, but that's what I said. He, so, I mean, he, in all he, because I took it as he I, never did I, anything, but I see where her fear yeah. came from. And and that's what, and that's what I that's what I was with meaning his, with by with the anger issue. I mean, but do you though? That's I, that's, could, I did because because. But that's what I was meaning until he snapped. Was, you didn't know if that was it. No, but you can always know when someone's getting to their line, and then you always know you can figure out when to just go. Okay, now or so, not. Some of those. Look what happened with the the the, the Nazi guy. Push, push, push. 
Um, but some of those things too, to me, like, uh, as far as his little micro com- like his comments that he had with the, uh, common communists, communists. And, uh, what was the other terms he'd say? He said all these different things about things that bothered him and people taking jobs from the Americans in the country. Like he would go on those little rants. So I could see him getting heated about moments like that with the wife and being overly passionate about his opinions. So, yeah, I guess I could see that, but it's also a lot of things where you, this is, it's one of the good things about this movie is you're kind of left with that open interpretation. You don't know if it's, if it was uh, something that was progressive, if it was legitimate, if she was imagining it worse than it was painting him as something he wasn't those type things. I just think his, I mean, yeah, it's definitely Anybody there. who gets out of their car and just walks away from a traffic jam and just so, leaves their car. So, but, but you're already the, like on a level that most people, like no one's at. But to that uh, point though. But, but you, you have to be pushed to that point, I think. I, I, I think, I think at some point I've been there, you know, and, and I hate to be the serious one this you time. You gotta leave the WRX? Um, you know what? There was a time in my life, no lie. There was a time in my life where I was so mentally beat down and so fragile in that aspect that, yes, I would have gotten out of my WRX and walked away. And in the moment preceding that, uh, where you see, like, uh, you know, we talked about your your fear of uh, being in small spaces. Mm-hmm. When somebody's, see that when somebody's <laughs> having a He panic- wasn't even in it. So when when somebody's having a panic attack or an anxiety attack, those things start closing in. And that's what happened in that car in that moment, I feel, because everything, every sound was heightened, every instance, every aggression, everything was all piling in. The fly, the fucking fly that crawled in his neck. and He he, he was in park just trying to kill a fly. I was just imagining in in that moment, that was cool, because I was imagining being in the car behind him, seeing this dude just go ape shit in the car, swatting and trying to find a fly. And I'm like... I imagine, I would just, honestly, if I saw that, I would assume a bee was trying to sting him. Uh, but those things leading Bees. up to that, though, like, when he finally snapped, I, felt, I feel like in that moment, he's like, fuck this, I don't care if there's restraining order, I'm going to my daughter. I want to see my daughter. Yeah. Um, and, and I also noticed, too, a pattern in his behaviors. He was not somebody who wanted to, he didn't wish harm on anyone who was a good person. He didn't wish harm on anyone who was doing anything wrong to him. He even, he was paying for things as he went along. Just, he was just trying to get He didn't like his, their attitude. No, he, didn't, he, he was, didn't like their demeanor. He was trying to make them see things through his eyes, even though it might have been a very skewed point of view. He was trying to have them understand where he's coming from. He just, all he just way, wanted to go home. All the way till when he crossed that line with the Nazi. Because he killed the Nazi, and you knew that like that 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 guy had it coming. Cause and he, he was, well, he even looked at the the Nazi and said, "I am disagreeing with you. I am, I am, you know." He 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 went out there. He said, "It's okay to disagree." He said this to the Nazi. The Nazi attacked him. Yeah. I mean, at what point does it I become I justified? No, no, that was justified because he had him. He was trying to handcuff him he was trying to you know but that was like so we were talking we've talked in previous episodes about transitional moments and characters and i feel like when he crossed that line he killed him that's when that line crossed because all yeah. of a sudden you've got it already happened dark green no because that's when he changed his outfit well, no, no, dark green he, coat. in his head he's like well i just did it yeah like, it's, yeah, yeah like he it, it's right. happened it's yeah. time you know I, I, I don't i don't feel he went to the ex-wife's house i don't to hurt her it's I, just like philip and flip <laughs> it's just like radioactive dreams <laughs> transitional moments let's not talk about that one i don't i don't think he he got out of his car to go home to hurt his ex-wife and daughter no now he just wanted to go home he just he wanted, wanted to, go to feel home. normality again yeah he wanted to go home now after he killed the nazi that was the change i think at that point now he's like i'm seeing my fucking daughter he kissed my ass yeah i think at that point i'm seeing my daughter anybody gets in my way they're gonna die whether it's my wife or whoever it is you know i i, I think that, so, that that decision was made after he kills the nazi and he's fleeing um oh he has another moment after the nazi before he jumps the fence doesn't he he's got the shotgun golf course it was the golf, golf course, course yeah um, which was a great scene too. Oh yeah, I love that because the guy, the guy's being a total prick going get off my golf course. Actually, it reminded me of your love of golf. I thought you'd appreciate that moment. And he starts going on the terror. He's like, "There should be kids playing here. It should be a playground. It should be a this and that." And he's going on and on. And I was like, "Those are all valid points." 
But after he gets through that and the guy falls over with a heart attack, his pills are going in the water with the cart, the golf cart. He runs, he hops over the fence. Now, because we've attacked a golf course, now well, the police are before he coming. leaves. Before, <laughs> wait, before he leaves, he looks at that guy and goes, where's your pills? And he points at the cart yeah. and he goes, well, now you're going to die in that funny little hat. Yeah. And that was a good moment. You got something? No? Keep going. Okay. So the uh, next I do, but keep the going. next scene was uh was pretty interesting to me because you can take it one of two ways. It was he hops the fence of uh what's on the edge of the golf course into the backyard of a it looks like a mansion with a swimming pool. The first person he sees is actually the gardener who knows that the person who lives there is out of town and he's just trying to use the pool and cook out a little bit. Um and he's got his wife and his his daughter with him. Um, and so two kids, two kids. That's right. Um, but Michael Douglas walks up to them and he's talking to them and the people think that he's part of the security company. And so they're afraid they're going to get told on for being there. And all of a sudden police cars start coming around because they just invaded a golf course with upper class people who of course called right away. It's the first time you actually had police response, which was interesting. They all came into the area, though, so he pulled the little girl from the family with him over, and they all walked into where it was like kind of a hidden little vestibule area. And uh, when they pull over there, you couldn't tell if he was pulling the girl to be like his safe getaway or if he was just making sure she was safe and pulled to the side. I took it that way just because it it didn't go anywhere else. Oh, I I think that was the intent. The the scene was, hey, let's get over here. I don't want anything to happen to you guys. But Dad and Mom, when they saw him with her, I think they thought it differently. But I think that was intent for him. He saw the the blood on the girl's hand. He's like, oh, no, honey, I didn't. You know, he thought he hurt her. But there's one way to, like, end this whole movie and one easy thing. Why didn't the wife... When he started calling so much, just go somewhere else. Go to a friend's. Call a friend's. Instead uh, of calling it, the cops a hundred times, it doesn't, it doesn't, where it comes off like play wolf. I know it's the daughter's birthday, but at what point do you make that decision? Yeah, I, I thought, and I know it's a movie, so I thought don't start with thing. that. I, know, I thought the same thing, because uh, I was like, you know, the, I first understand thing the, the cop says here. Here, else you could go. Yeah, I understand the party's there. It's her, <coughs> per, her birthday party, and she doesn't want to leave. But the safest thing is she was that scared for her and her daughter. She should have left. Now, on the flip side of that, I don't think that she should have to leave her home. No, you she know, shouldn't. She should. But, Here, but common sense. Here's the thing. If, yes, you, I if agree. you leave your home, all you're doing is delaying the inevitable. He's yeah. still gonna, If he's on a mission, he's going to get to her. So I think her making a stand and calling the police and the authorities was a good good move. No, I agree. But when the cops finally say, we can't keep coming out here to do this because Uh, you keep calling. When the detective connected the dots for there's a path because Michael Douglas is on foot this whole movie while he's going from instance to instance to instance of his his, uh, outbursts and his trying to get his point across in his message. Um there's his li- first starting off his license plate said defense on it defense d dash f e n s because he worked for no tech in the defense department in california but he was laid off a month prior um so when the detective's piecing all this together he goes back to the first store the first store was a north korean gentleman who owned the store with broken english and he was selling things at a very expensive price and this set michael douglas off because he needed change to call his daughter he wanted to call home so they wanted 85 cents for a can of coke and he just wanted change from a dollar and he was like now i can't make the phone call and he it, it escalated from there right and it goes on his rest of his path so the detective goes back to that first instance because he's trying to put piece everything together and he happens to climb through the woods and up a hill and looks over i don't know why he went that way but he happens to look over at the place that uh the car was abandoned earlier in the day well because he was there he was there and helped push that's the car right. out yeah, of that's the, right yeah he so helped he remembered it. it yeah he helped the traffic cop, cop and he saw the big billboard that he saw as he was waiting in traffic as well and he's like this is where i saw that Mm -hmm. car and so he walked up there and saw defense that car and then followed the path down and and from there though he starts cheering defense and so you kind of piece a little bit more together out of this you start to see the everything come to to a head yeah this was way better than last week (laughs) probably like but whatever you're welcome but (laughs) last week Last week's episode, I got to Don't laugh. I got to laugh and have a good time the whole time. This time I had to get serious. Fuck you. 
<laughs> not only did he get to laugh, it was at our expense because he made us watch that just to shit on it with us. That's all right. I made him watch Slumberland. I'll find something worse next time. For him, anyway. I'll love it. He'll hate it. I, I actually think I know your next movie. I, I can I can give you a suggestion. Not now. We'll do it later. But... So, Robert Duvall's character. He uh... talk about him and his wife. I was going to swear I was going to go. Uh, okay. him and, yeah, the yeah. dynamic of him and his wife. He is a beat down man. That it, this, is, this is this is this Who is this is wounded yeah. at one point, and they're giving him shit for it. Yeah, this is my take take away from him. He is he is wounded, wounded on numerous fronts, yeah. inter, in, inner and outer. Yeah, he he was he was he was wounded at work. He was put at a desk job, but he requested this desk job because of his wife. His wife beat him down. The people at the precinct beat him down. He was just kind of a shell of a man. So there's two falling down stories really yeah. happening here. But one is the righteous path and one is the non-righteous yeah. path. Mm -hmm. And by, by the time Robert Duvall's character finds, figures out the path of where defense is going, he... Uh, he kind of breaks from his shell that he's been pushed into. And he's, he tells his wife, like, look, I'm going to go do this. I'm, I'm working. Have Leave me alone. Ready Have dinner home. ready when I get home. Put and his foot down finally. Yeah. Um, you know what's funny is so we, at one point, um, Robert Duvall and his partner, they go to our former partner now, new, um, but they team back up. They go to uh, – William's house where he's living with his mom and the mom uh, that is putting up with him she's a little mentally off herself uh, but she reminds me intensely of the wife the Robert Duvall's because mm -hmm. they both kind of have that same offness and they almost look alike too so but so Robert Duvall you can see how he handles mental illness and how he deals with it by he sees her figurine collection she just wants him, them to leave yeah and he walks over, he goes, tell me about these. What's your favorite one? And tries to find a common ground with her. And that, that gets him in and he finally can have that conversation. Yeah. So back to the mentally ill wife, though. Well, yeah, I mean, he puts his foot down. And the thing is, was she mentally ill or was she just power I think, hungry? I no, think she uh, just, no. They, uh, they, they lost a the daughter. They, they lost a daughter. That's right. And that's put her over the edge. Uh, she, was, she was really broke down from the loss of her daughter. And I think, really, her she, intent with her husband was good. But she took it to the extreme because it of the death of her annoying. daughter. So when he got shot in line of duty, she was so overprotective. She wanted him to retire. She didn't want him to go back to be a policeman. She she just wanted him home. But she became so overbearing and and overprotective that it's what was causing him to retire. It was right. what you know she was calling, say, just leave work, come home. You know, he's like, no, I've got stuff to do. I'm working. You know, um, I mean, she did have a point. It's the last day. But he, the thing is, I mean, he had a point to prove because everyone yeah. was against him. Everyone was shitting on him the whole time, mm -hmm. and, except, and, for, except for what's the the. I'm assuming that was his old partner. Yeah, um, and in the mentally uh, ill portion of the wife, I, I do want to talk about that a little more. So, like, to me, I, I, I see her as definitely being off a little, but I also I, I think it's a um, concern. It's concern, but what's the word? Separation anxiety. Uh, I would go with um, because she's already lost a child. She almost lost him, and all she wants is him to come home so he's not so she doesn't lose him too because she probably wouldn't be here is the way I'm get, what I'm guessing. Right. Um, and so she's almost crying to him and whining, and he loves her and he wants to stand by her. And he the way he even conveys that to the partner, um, and saying I love my wife, she means everything to me. Like that was that was deep, that was intense. And so you could tell like that there's a reason behind him. He didn't care about the pension. He knew he was losing part of it. And he's still going to do all that. So there's a, there's a lot to unpack there. But um, but I do like that you pointed out that the d detective has his area falling down as well. And then mm -hmm. you kind of see these two paths and one's, one's good and one's not. And uh, it, the outcome is, is evident. So let's yeah. get to the end because I can tell you my favorite part of this whole movie. <laughs> okay. Explain the end. Go ahead. So at the end, he goes into the house and he realizes they're not there. Uh, she... He made a phone call. She knew he was close. And so she went out the back door and then came around the front. As he went in the front, her and the kid get away. And then he starts to remember and goes through. He's watching a video and he remembers that she loves the pier, which is right at the end of the street there. They live by the pier. 
So he goes and finds her. Luckily, the cop catches up. Robert Duvall catches up. And he, and honestly, I really like the way they wrote that. It was not annoying. That's exactly the way you handle that kind of a situation where you've got someone a little on edge with a gun, you know, and a kid involved. But long story short, they get to a point where a scuffle happens. Uh, Michael Douglas loses the gun. And he tells him, I have a gun on me. And at this point, I'm like, I'm not surprised. You stole the whole bag of guns from the gangsters mm -hmm. and the gang members an hour ago. So, okay. And he says, let's do it basically an old style duel. And he starts counting and the, the, the cop played along. I would have shot it too. I wouldn't have waited till one. I would have shot yeah, it too. But he told him. He said. He he said. You know, let's do an old timey duel. He said, I prefer not. You know, he yeah, told he said him. He didn't want to, but he did play along because yeah. he started counting. But I'm telling you right now, if it was me, I would have at two. I would have would have did it. And I love the fact that he got that water gun out and got him in the face with the water before the cop pulled pulled trigger. Like, that was a really nice little touch at the end to go, huh, he would have won. You know what I like even more? I mean, more? you would have went to jail at some point anyway, yeah. but, but he would have won that. You know what I like even more about that scene? And that shows that the cop needs to stop. Well, to me, that shows he needed to retire. Uh, what I liked even more about that scene was when Robert Duvall's character comes up and he's talking. He's talking. He's eating popcorn, which mm -hmm. I'm sure you appreciated. <laughs> but... uh <laughs> He's he's eating popcorn and he's talking and he's walking around but kind of keeping his distance and as he sees Michael Douglas's character turn his head the wife is looking at him and he flashes his Yeah, gun. I, I like that too like hey like you're okay. Yeah, he flashes his gun so she knows that but even he gave the nod like kick the gun away. Yeah. You know, like it was all done really well and it wasn't the thing is those kind of parts can be written in a way that you're just like, that would never work. But they, I, I think they wrote it right. I think that they wrote it where it was, you know, he, he had the training. It showed the training. But the squirt gun and the fact that he went like this, you know, like that was, to me, that was like, oh, oh damn. Because you don't realize it. You just see, oh, he pulled out a, a, a squirt gun. You don't really see the water. But you, him doing this lets you know, like, he would have won. Yeah. But I really do think that him also lose, losing shows that it might be time to retire because you don't have the reaction time. No, for sure. I mean, that, that I think he, not knowing what to expect in that moment, too, probably put a lot of things in perspective for him about, A, where he's at his this age. This is the end. I should go home. Yeah. Uh, he probably was like, you know what? He had a lot to prove as well. I, I, I liked, mean, so. I did like how I got to the captain during the the tv thing fuck you yeah <laughs> like that yeah. was good that, you're out anyway prick. what are they gonna that, do suspend you i don't think i've ever like I, I don't know i can't tell you the movies that that captain has been in but every movie i've seen him in i've detested and despised him as an actor he's been in a, quite a few things i think that does suck Sam. i think these guys get such an a uh, spot Stero or that like, like, you, just, you just see him you just hate him and that sucks Our because they, they could be great people yeah Oh, I, I, I was trying to remember who he, who he was. I remember who he was. Now he uh, he played in Justified. He played uh, Raylan Gibbons' dad in Justified. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah! I totally remember that now. Yeah. Have you seen the newer Justified? I didn't finish it. I, I wasn't. Seen I that wasn't yet. digging it. Oh, I honestly. love Justified. Uh, you know, but you know what it was missing. Go ahead, Walton Goggins. Yep, I knew that was coming. <laughs> I knew it was coming. So. Some fun facts about this movie. Um, this movie got made because of Michael Douglas. It was the script was floating around Hollywood, and the guy who wrote it, no studio wanted it, and he was getting ready to to take it back to cable networks if it could just be turned into a made-for-TV movie. <laughs> when Michael Douglas got a hold of the script and he was basically said we have to make this movie so he attached himself to the script and reshopped it okay he also took a pay cut in order to get the movie 
done because he believed in the script that much. So the reason this movie actually got made was because of Michael Douglas. And I'm sure Robert Duvall jumped on because he knows yeah. him and that because you wouldn't have got an actor like that if that were anything less. Another so. thing that had happened was this movie was being filmed during the middle of the L.A. riots to the point that they had to delay filming and move filming to uh, the studio. That is an interesting piece of history yeah. because uh, that's the, we're talking the Rodney King yeah. era, everything that came out of that. There's so much music, so much frustration in our country, so much came out of that time frame. So. Who comes up with the last name Pendergast? Is it Pendergast or Grast? Gast. Pendergast. Uh, I've heard that name before. Pendergast. That? that was the guy's last. That was the cop's last name. That was Duvall's last name. Anyway. Oh, that's right. Like, that is a long, weird name. Like to just make up a name for a movie. The um, haircut and um, outfit that Michael Douglas wore. He picked it because he wanted to look like he was out of the nineteen fifties. He wanted to look like a man out of time, basically. He said he wanted to look like a 1950s. You're what you would look at as a sitcom. Which is eerily representative of a lot of people today. Yeah. Uh, and I say that because there's a lot of people who don't like new era, new age, digital, future, all mm-hmm. the stuff that's going on now. They they're, they can't get past a lot of the, the, the past events, 90s. Things are stuck in this this tunnel and i feel like that's a great call that he made and it's yeah. kind of timeless to do that yeah yeah so, he, he said he wanted to feel like a man out of time with how because of was his presented. views his yeah. views and the way he's coming forward absolutely the uh to add on to that the not economically valuable viable viable, viable yes. uh guy his outfit is identical to michael douglas's and, and, outfit and, but he was treated differently because of the yeah. color of his skin which is a great thing yeah. to point out too the movie was banned in South Korea. Wow. It was banned in South Korea due to um, vigilante justice and the... Uh, yeah, they don't the, want to give anybody ideas over the, there. The uh, South Korean represent, representation of the guy from the, the little market. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mr. Uh, Lee. Yeah, Mr. Lee. They they wasn't happy with how he was portrayed, and it was it was banned in South Korea. Well, I can understand, I, I mean, the portrayal is whatever, but I can understand, especially in a country like North and South Korea with all the shit they have going on, I can understand wholeheartedly the um, why they chose that path, because that would give people, as you were saying, like those ideas and put pe- make people feel like they can rise above. Yeah. So. And uh, did you notice who directed this? Yeah, the dumbass who fucked up Batman. <laughs> Well, there's different Batmans. What are we talking about? What you got? The worst one. Batman, Clooney. Robin, and Forever. I didn't mind. I didn't mind the Kilmer movie. No, nah. I you know, and I like Joel Schumacher because that's who directed it, and he's done. He's done other great movies. He's but done, he, he did, I mean, he it is he, it is out yeah. there that he apologized yeah. for how bad the Clooney Batman was. Clooney has apologized that he should never even played the part. Yeah. At some point. We will do an episode that is just fully not one Batman movie, all Batman encompassed. I feel like there's a lot to unpack there. I think that's a good good conversation topic, and I'd love to. He's getting excited. Oh yeah, he's getting excited <laughs> yeah. of it. But <laughs> all right, yeah, Joel Schumacher, he did the worst Batman films for sure. But he also did the Lost Boys. He did Flatliners. He did um, God. Uh, Saint way, Elmo's Fire. He did Saint Saint by Elmo's the way, Fire. All three of those are amazing films. Yeah. Yeah. Flatliners, as, as phone funny. booth, phone booth. Yeah, oh, he did phone that, booth. I, I enjoy phone booth. Now, phone booth is a really dated film. It's, if you watch it now, like it just because you don't even see a phone I've booth. I've seen it. I don't remember it though. I think I need to see it again. I see that and like. There's like few movies out at this point. There are the 911 callers, where somebody calls in and they're on the phone with somebody the whole movie. Like those movies, re- like I appreciate what they're trying to go for, but I can't get down with them. They they frustrate me. Um, phone booth was one of the first ones, and I enjoyed it when it came out. Uh, I mean, because Colin Farrell's in it, Kiefer Sullivan's in it. It's it's it was good. It's just Colin Farrell's, um, depending on his role. Uh, he's either amazing or awful. Yeah, he really is. You know what I did like him in? 
I like the remake of Fright Night. I, I liked, did too. I, didn't I mind liked that. his version of Jerry I, the Vampire. I would have loved to see more of those movies. Actually, I would have loved to see those continue on and, and get a, get a fresh continuance. Well, they, they did do a part two, but it was cr- trash. Uh, yeah, it was, it was trash. Um, but like, um, I, I was a big fan. I was a kid of the Fright Night comics, <laughs> and uh, so I would like to almost see like. Like I'm a big fan of anything that goes into a series mode. I, I think that series can be what you want. And you have more exploration. You can do more with limited budget too. Like I, I just would like to see some of those things not get just tossed to the trash. All righty, box office. Hold on, I'm still on phone booth. <laughs> I was looking at so it. I've got two different numbers on what this movie did. What did you get? What did you get on budget? You you know, you already looked, didn't you? I just happened to look down and saw a couple numbers. I don't know what's what. Well, what, what do you think the budget was? I don't know because I just saw your, your your numbers. I could go up two ways with this now. <laughs> don't hurt yourself. Budget. I'll say sixty mil. Sixty. No, 25. 25. Where, you, what am I, what was I looking at? Yeah, so 40 and 96. What do we got there? Oh, that's your initial, and those are your... This uh, is this is what, for the box office, I, I found two different numbers. I think Wikipedia says $96 million, uh-huh. for box but most office. of the time Wikipedia is off. And when I went to actual box office pages, it was saying $40 million. Um, but then I went to another box office page and it said 96. So I'm not sure what the box office actually is. It made money though. So it made that, money. That's, that's yeah. the important part. So that's good. Um, ratings. 3.82. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten used to your extra numbers now. So it's what it is. I thought it was a good movie. Um, it was a little slow at times. I, I, but I, I, I would definitely, it's not one I'm going to be like, it's not a movie where I go, hey, Heather, do you want to watch this? But it, if it was, if, if she came to me and said, hey, I want to watch this, I'd be like, okay. You it's, know it's, I mean? one, it's a movie you can put on in the background and do other See, stuff. See, I don't do that with movies because I just want to watch. Like, that's what Scrubs is for. <laughs> I've seen every episode enough. I know what's happening just by hearing it. I know what's on TV, so I'm good. But no, I, I, but I did think it was a really, really good movie. Um, I'm gonna say three point six. Any context? I I mean I've seen it a bunch, and I think I like it, that you've seen it technically with three sets of eyes. I have, and I think I that's like that. why I'm landing at three point six because I think when I was a kid, I would have rated this more, and it's weird. I, I would have rated this a different at all different points. I think as a as a young kid when I watched it, um, or teenager when I watched it, because it was I was probably a teen when this came out. Um, I might have said two point eight or three, and I think when I was in my twenties or early thirties when I watched it, I probably would have said this is a four, or a, or, or even more than a four. Yeah. And I think today. Looking at it from my eyes today, I feel like it's you know three point six. It kind of fits in the middle for me because it it hits some of those sens- sensitive subjects that are. It makes it a little harder for me to watch today, even though I enjoy the movie. Okay, uh, for me, this movie hit so many realistic paths and chords and. Uh, especially now that I'm older. Um, so my takeaway from this is a 3.9 cinema nerds, 3.9 nerds. Uh, and I feel like this movie uh, has held up through the test of time. And that's a big thing for me too. You've got a great story. You've got great casting. You've got great um, uh, context in the movie. Um, it's just delivered well. Oh no. What are you shaking your head at? I agree with everything you're saying. But what do you, you read something you were shaking your head at? I decided to see what Rotten Tomatoes said about this because I, I never agree with them. Okay, so let's let's go to let's just go. I'm not my these numbers I agree with. I did something else. Falling down, 
tomato meter, seventy five percent. It's actually for me that to me that's a good number. That's, for that's, them. that's probably for them. That's good. Number. I'd go higher, but that's audience yeah. score was eighty four. Okay, that's reasonable. You know what? Just for the hell of it. Uh oh. Please, please bear with me here one second. <laughs> Waiting for the Wi Fi. Slumberland was a forty tomato, but eighty six audience. Hmm. See, I would agree with Rotten Tomatoes on that one. The party animal. <laughs> this is why I was shaking my head. There's no score for the tomato meter. They're just like, no. Like, it's zero. There's nothing there. They it's just did, they didn't enough. review it. Because it's not fucking worth it. <laughs> does, that's it does it have an audience score? 70%. And that's why I shook my head. 70%. There's 70% of assholes the like The audience him. rated it higher than you, asshole. You know what? <laughs> but that is awesome. Here. That is awesome, though. Because they can appreciate it, even though I appreciate it, the way I appreciate it, that it is a crap movie. But it's a it's an enjoyable crap movie. I'm just happy that we I, both thought the same thing. I just, for what me, do you think Fat Man was? Uh, I would say 50. 44 tomato, 84 audience. Not the tomato sucks. I, what was your what, what was the one you just did? The mist. The mist. Yeah, that one would be rated high all the way around. It better be, because it was a good movie. There it is, seventy three tomato. Oh, come on, there we go, sixty five audience. Really? Wow, audience didn't like it as you much know, as I. I feel like there's a. Two ways to take that. I bet ending. you. I bet you that that is people that read the books that did not no, like no. the movie. It's it's the it's two different elements that we discussed when we discussed the mist. That religious woman probably pissed people off, and the scene with the, his son. I bet any money that people just did not receive that well, and that's why you got that. As a whole, I like the movie. Good job. Yeah, you can still go fuck yourself from last week. Oh. So, so to, to expand upon that, I was, what I was going to say before he started talking about that. Sorry. No, you're good. Uh, was I have to learn to dig deeper into JP's statements and understanding what he's saying. <laughs> so next time he says it's a thousand times worse. He I'm means not gonna, worse. I, I, he, mean, he, might, he might mean it might, he might mean it is actually worse. Or he means like, yeah, that movie was awesome, but this one's even better. But it's worse, and good, like in, you know, in a good way. I have to fucking dig with you now. You, you gotta dig. That? I'm gonna. It's gonna happen. The fact that you own that movie, I've lost respect. Yeah. For no, no, hold on. So, so when he you chose own this that movie, movie, when he chose this There's, movie, you can't find it anywhere. When he chose, you can't this even movie, pay to rent it, James. When he oh, chose man. this movie. He ran up to me excited and happy to hand it to me, to loan it to me to watch. And he goes, here, here, I got a copy. You can take this and watch it. And he was smiling. And I didn't realize his smile was a setup. It was a lie. <laughs> my next one's not like that, though. No, I, I, I agree. want my $5 in gas that I had to go to his house and pick it up. <laughs> you know what? I'll give you five bucks for that. <laughs> <laughs> but I know your car didn't spend five bucks in gas to his house to get that movie. Uh, really? You tell me how good gas mileage you get all the yeah, time. I bet you. Aren't your parents uh, in North Homestead? No, for part. Oh, right now. Oh, so hold on. Let me think about this. It's 15 minutes rest, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. It's probably about 22 miles, maybe? Yeah, it's 22 miles. I actually know it. I, I know it's 22 miles. So you would owe me for how much a gallon of gas is right now. We'll say three hundred nine was what I got it the other day, uh, about two dollars and fifty cents. That was way too long of a yeah. breakdown. I also, <laughs> but I also want interest. <laughs> I had to watch the movie too. I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting together some some numbers, some analytics. I'm going to take averages of all of our ratings, and we're going to have if it if it's over two and a half or it's below two and a half, it goes on a, on a certain list. I think that's what we're going to do. It's going to happen. To see what is rated the worst. Yes. Or what's rated the best. I can best. tell you right now what the worst was. It's not Party Animal. Yes, it was. Uh, you were under. We, you were at a 2-1-2, two, two, and yeah. I was at a you negative were the only, You were the only thing that was going to say Party Animal, and you, <laughs> ranked, you rated it a 2.1. And I'm going to go further than that. I rated it a 2. He was originally going to rate it lower, he said. <laughs> and he said he only went to 2.1 because I said 2. So fuck and I was off, a zero anyway. Off, so you're what, what's four point one divided by three? That's where that's at. Hmm. Yeah, that one's definitely going to be the bottom so far. 
I'm sure that between three of us, and I want it to be known JP, that I wasn't the point one. <laughs> you were. You can't. You hit, yours was a one. Mine was a. You what can't did you, have you zero. said point eight two or some shit? Three point eight two for this not movie on, for no, falling down. Not on that one. But for once, I wasn't the point. Now we're going to the the. the nah. Regardless, my next pick is not a shit movie. So. I I actually agree. I, I, <laughs> Now, I do like most of JP's choices. I do like most of James, too. But we definitely have some, some diversity happening here. Brian, where can I find us? Falling down? Us. Us? Well, we might be falling down. Falling We're down. So, so one thing I will point out is that, as we've talked about and mentioned before, we are going to be trying to make things more available or give you guys access, like tell you where to find and locate these movies to watch. Falling down, so, you can, the cheapest I've seen right now is $2.99. $2.99 on I Prime. did it on Prime. Yeah. And there's another, there's one of the other ones had it yeah, for $2.99, like, but I, think, I wasn't doing it. I think Voodoo had it for $2.99, yeah. but I just did Prime. But us, you can find at 3 synonerds at gmail.com. That is our gmail and then further you can go with uh why did the screen just change anyways uh further if you go to our facebook you can check out our bio and you'll see our link tree which has all of the podcast platforms that you guys can stream us on and it also has our merch store so check us out and give us some feedback please and jp when are we doing it live february 25th <laughs> we've talked about it seven times he's still at a thing who, who will our guest be william butler will be our guest sunday february 25th you can look up his imdb you would know him from the not a living dead remake uh friday the 13th part seven leatherface texas chainsaw massacre three he has uh some stuff coming up he wants to talk about, and we're going to talk about some of his past projects, and it's going to be a good night. I'm excited as hell. So thank you for taking a good. good movie this week. <laughs> Jesus, shots fired. We will see you next time, everybody. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. We are your cinema nerds. Later.